In this episode, we are going to look at the voltage divider. Voltage divider. And this voltage divider is used in what? A series connected circuit. Pay attention. It is used in series connected circuit. And what we are going to use is, we are also going to use it to find voltages. Voltages across resistors very simple so we are going to identify a series connected circuit and use the voltage divider rule or approach to find the voltages across one or any of the required resistor so now let's look at a circuit so this circuit with a resistor this way And I have my voltage source this way. This is my circuit. I have R1, R2, and R3. This is my voltage source, Vt. This is series connected, right? And we want to also have an idea first we know that the total voltage is going to be the voltage drop across the resistor 1, resistor 2, and V at resistor 3. So now, what the voltage divider is going to do is going to tell us what voltage drop occurred at resistor 1. What is the value of the voltage at resistor 1? And what is the voltage drop also at resistor 2? And what is the voltage drop? at resistor 3 and we know that the summation of each of the voltages at the various resistors will give us the total voltage so with the voltage divider it is very simple it is used to find the voltages across the resistor so what voltage drop is happening here and what voltage drop is happening here if we have two or more resistors connected in series so let's look at how it goes it has a formula or an expression for a series connected circuit now the voltage drop across a resistor which we will call vn is giving us our rn on rt multiplying vt so this is the expression for the voltage divider once you know this you are able to calculate for the voltage drop for each resistor connected in circuit or connected in a series connected circuit vn equal to rn on rt multiplying by vt where each of them has meaning so here our vt as usual is our total voltage in the circuit and our rt is the total resistance offered by the number of what resistors connected in circuit or connected in series and we also have our rn which is what we refer to as any of the resistor any of the resistor so if i'm talking about resistor one that would be my r1 resistor two r2 and resistor three will be r3 where we also have vn what we are calculating for as the voltage across the said resistor or the resistor in question so it's very simple so what we see from the expression is we also have to find the total resistance whenever you want to find the voltage drop across each of the resistor connected in series using the voltage divider expression first you must find the total 
resistance. If they are three, you have to find the total resistance. If they, if they are two, the total resistance. Are you okay? And we must also know the total voltage and which resistor we want to do our calculation. Very simple for voltage divider. Let's work an example around it so that you can see how best we can apply the voltage divider approach. Example one, calculate the current flowing through the circuit and determine the voltage across resistor two. So here we want to know the current, let's call it I, flowing through the circuit and what is the voltage drop across this resistor two. Very simple. So right away we are going to have our solution and our parameters. We have R1 as resistor 1 to be 10 ohms and we also have resistor 2 as 20 ohms. What do we have again? We have 12 volts which is our VT, the total voltage as 12 volts. We also have current I as unknown. So since we are going to use the voltage divider approach to find the voltage across resistor 2, we know that we have to find the total resistance, RT. And from the circuit, our RT is going to be R1 plus R2 because it is series what? Connected. And RT is going to be R1, which is 10 plus our 20. And that is going to give us 30 ohm as our total resistance. So now we have total voltage, total resistance. Can we say from the Ohm's law, from the Ohm's law, that our VT should be equal to a series connected same current and RT. And this implies that our I current is going to be VT on R. C. So the current flowing through the circuit is going to be this 12 volts and the resistance as 30 ohms. And with this, we are going to get a 0 0.4 amperes current. So therefore, the current I, I'll call it IT flowing through the circuit is going to be 0 0.4 amperes. Are we good? So now we are done with the current flowing through the circuit. Let's look at the voltage across resistor two. So here we are going to use the voltage divider approach. We know that our VN voltage across any resistor is going to be our Rn on Rt times the total voltage. So here we want the voltage across resistor 2, and that is going to give us R2 on Rt multiplying Vt. We have all the parameters given. My R2 is giving us what? 20 ohms. And the total resistance is 30 and the voltage is giving us 12. With this, our V2 is going to be 8 volts. Therefore, the voltage across resistor 2 is 8 volts. Are we okay? So we can also calculate for V1, which is going to be R1 on RT multiplied by the total voltage. And that is going to give us R1, which is 10 on 30 multiplying 12. And this is going to give us 4 volts as V1. So you see that your VT is indeed equal to V1, the voltage across voltage, resistor 1 and resistor 2. And this is going to be 4 plus 8, giving us a 12 volt VT. So this is for the voltage divider. You can calculate for the voltage drop across 
any resistor when you have several resistors connected in series. Let's look at example two. Example two. So we have a diagram nicely drawn here with our resistors, resistor one, two, three, and four, and our voltage source. And from the diagram, we have to find RT, which is total resistance IT, the total current flowing through the circuit voltage across resistor one, so which is V1. And we are also to find V2 voltage across resistor two, V3, and V4. So this is quite simple. So let's look at how we can do it. First, let's write down our parameters. So from the diagram, we have our R1 to be 25 ohms, and we have our R2 to be 40 ohms. We also have R3 as 20 ohms. We also have R4, which is 15 ohms. Looking at the diagram, we also have the VT, which is the total voltage as 50 volts. So now, from the I part, we have to find RT. This is a series connected circuit. And we know that for series connected circuit, our RT is going to be the summation of the individual resistances. So R3 plus R4. And we know that R1 is 25 ohms plus R2, which is also 40, plus R3, that is 20, plus R4, that is 15. So after computing for all of this, you are going to get your total resistance as 100 ohms. So I'll just bring, they are all in ohms. So my RT is 100 ohms. Are we okay? So I, I, which is the total current flowing through the circuit. And I know that from Ohm's law, my VT is going to be IT multiplying RT. And with this, I'm going to say my IT, which is the current flowing through the circuit, the total current is going to be VT on RT which implies that IT is, what is the total voltage, which is 50 volts, and the total resistance is 100 ohms. Therefore, my total current is going to give me 0 0.5 amperes. So inside this circuit, the IT is 0 0.5 amperes. The third point is we have to find the voltage drop across the resistor one. And we have four of them. So by the idea of the voltage divider, we are going to say V1 is going to be resistor one on the total resistance multiplying by the total voltage. So my V1 is going to be, what is R1? That is 25 on the total resistance, which is 100, multiplied by the total voltage, which is also 50 volts. So 50, and with this, you are going to get a voltage drop across resistor one to be 12.5 volts. Are we clear? So V1 is, 12.5 volt. Remember, after everything, the summation of all the V1, V2, V3, and V4 should give us Vt. So we have V1 to be 12.5. Now, we go to the third part, which says V2 or IV, which is V2. And V2 is also going to be R2 is going to be R2. Let me divide this. 
this is going to be R2 on the R total multiplying VT. And V2, that is going to be checking for the value of V2, that is 40. R2 is 40 on the total resistance, which is 100, multiplying 50. And with this, you are going to get your V2 to be 20 volts. Now let's look at for V3, which is going to be R3 on RT multiplying by VT. And resistor 3 is 20 on the total resistance 100 multiplying 50. And this, the voltage across the resistor 3 is 10 volts. The same thing happens to V4 which is going to be R4 on RT multiplying the VT, which means our V4 is 15 on 100 multiplying 50, and that is going to give us 7.5. So we now know the voltage across resistor 1, resistor 2, resistor 3, and resistor 4. So we said VT should be the summation of all of the voltage drops. From our calculation, V1 is giving us 12.5. And V2, we have it as 20. We have V3 as 10. And V4 as 7.5. This and this is going to give us 30. 12.5 plus 7.5. So we know that the summation of 12.5 plus 30 plus 7.5, that is going to give us 50 volts. So it is, we are correct for the answers. Thank you for watching this episode and taking time to go through the voltage divider approach. Check out for the next episode on parallel arrangement of resistances.